In this video, we're going to have a look at binomial hypothesis testing, but testing for a decrease in the value of P. So the question says, in a rearrangement code, the letters of a message are rearranged so that the frequency with which any letter, particular letter appears is the same as in the original message. In ordinary German, the letter E appears 19% of the time. A certain encoded message of 20 letters contains one letter E. Using exact binomial distribution, test at the 10% significance level whether there's evidence that the proportion of the letter E in the language from which this message is a sample is less than, in German, i.e. less than 19%. So as in any hypothesis test, we need to define the parameter that we're testing for. So step one, define the parameter that we are testing and in this case it's been defined in the question just to get the marks we need to define it in our answer as well so P equals the proportion of the letter E in the sample. So that's how you get your first mark. So I'm going to put a tick there. That's our first mark gained. Step two. State the null and alternate hypotheses in terms of P. So our null hypothesis, if we're sitting on the fence, we assume their claim is true. So H naught colon P equals 0.19. So that's the claim that's been made the letter E occurs 19% of the time, and we're just going to assume that's true. However, if we were to challenge the claim, which somebody has in part one, it's claimed that the that the letter E occurs less than 19% of the time, so P is less than 0 0.19, and that's our alternate hypothesis. So we start off with a null, null hypothesis, assuming what we're told is true, then a challenge is made to that claim. And I should point out now, again, each of those is usually worth a mark. So a tick for each of those. Might differ slightly from exam board to exam board, but the principle's the same. Step three. So use the experimental data given. to test the proposed value of P. So in this case, we're told that P is 0 0.19 and we're trying to find evidence to suggest that it's less than 0 0.19. And before I continue, I just want to point out that anything I've written in red is worth marks. That would be my answer in an exam situation. Anything in blue is simply instruction. So continuing with the question, we need to use our experimental evidence to find out whether the frequency is less than 19%. We've assumed it's 19%. Now we're looking for evidence that it's less than 19%. So it says here that a certain encoded message of 20 letters. Okay, so now we can see that this is a binomial distribution. And we'll play the game 20 times. We'll check 20 letters. The frequency, and we're assuming that we're telling the truth, is 19%. And our observed data is x is 1. Okay, so what we should imagine now is trying to model this situation on a sliding scale. 
And on this sliding scale, we're going to reject anything, any event that occurs if it's cumulatively less than the significance level. So the bottom 10%, because we're testing to the left, the left-hand side of the scale, the bottom 10% in this case, because that's the significance level, the bottom 10%, We're going to reject. So we need to find out whether our observation of one out of 20 of the letters being E cumulatively is in the bottom 10%. Now we can do this by seeing how much probability is to the left of one. Probability that X is less than or equal to one. And that's a way of testing whether it's in the bottom 10%. We'll see why in just a second. So x is less than or equal to 1. So if I get the calculator ready, there it is there. Menu, distribution, binomial cumulative distribution, because we're doing a less than or equal to variable. And the probability x is less than or equal to 1. We'll pick 20 letters. And there was a 19% chance of success, 90% chance of a letter being an E. Right, so that's 0.0841 equals 0.0841. So what we're going to do now, now that we know 0.0841 or 8.41% 8 of the probability lies to the left of 1, we're going to see where 1 lies on this sliding scale. So, if 0.0841 of the probability lies to the left, this is 10% region, so 0.0841 is less than 10%, so 0.0841 of the probability lies to the left of 1, therefore, it's around about there on the scale, in the rejection region, so we are going to reject before we go on to the next section about accepting and rejecting, we should point out that that there usually is worth a mark, as is using it to get that value there. So step four, conclude in context. So we can now see that our observed value of one cumulatively lies in the rejection region. So the next step, let's express that. So compare calculated p-value, that's this value here, this is our p-value, to the significance level. So again, this is worth a mark, so I'm going to do it in red. So we've got 0 0.0841 is less than 0 0.1. That means it should lie in the rejection region, or rather it does lie in the rejection region. Ticket, it's worth a mark. Then finally, step five, conclude in context. So if it's in the rejection region, we are going to reject H0. If we found our observed value not to be in the rejection region cumulatively, then we'd write do not reject H0. Everything has to be written in terms of H0. It's H0 that's on trial. And now that we've rejected H0, we can do a further in-context conclusion. So we've found that there's sufficient evidence. So sufficient evidence to suggest that the letter E occurs less than 19% of the time and that's that so let's dissect what we've done here the most important step to understand is this step here 
because basically we've got our significance level which is our threshold our level of acceptability to decide whether or not something was so unlikely that we need to reject the assumptions that we initially made so the assumption we initially made was that p is 0.19 so under this model here where p is 0.19 we did an experiment and we found that we won i.e the letter e occurred one time out of 20. now we found that that was so unlikely to happen only an 8.41 percent chance of that happening under the original model that actually if the original model probably wasn't right we decided what was acceptable by and it is pretty arbitrary but we decided that 10 percent was our threshold i.e if something was less likely than 10 percent to happen that's when we say nah must be wrong with that 10 percent uncertainty comes 90 percent certainty we can say with 90 percent certainty on a 10 percent significance level that the conclusion is correct so remember unlikely observations such as this one here lead us to reject the null hypothesis so for example say you had a friend who claimed to have 500 quid in the bank might be telling the truth might be lying can't be sure say that same friend later claimed to have two thousand pounds in the bank again not that much of a stretch could be the truth could be a lie don't know but when he starts extending that to having say a million pounds in the bank that's when the story is so unlikely that you're going to say no mate you're lying and that's what this is here this claim here had only eight percent eight point four one percent chance of occurring when something so unlikely happens when we get such an unlikely story that's when we reject the null hypothesis and that's hypothesis testing in a nutshell. So for more videos like this, go to alevelmathsrevision.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure if you do like this video, you click the thumbs up at the bottom.